Hi folks, this video is about tectonic hazards and when they become disasters. It's going to build on uh, the videos which I've done on the risk equation and on how the risk equation applies to a less developed country and to a more developed country, i.e. Philippines and California. So please watch those videos first before you watch this one. However, if you have gone ahead and watched those, then um, you'll be familiar with the terms risk, which we understand to be hazard times vulnerability divided by capacity to cope. That's the risk of a disaster happening. The risk is basically hazard and vulnerability multiplied together, but then that risk is reduced by how well uh, you can cope, your capacity to cope. Or, as the term is uh, used more now um, is the term resilience. Now the risk equation is a very mathematical formula um, but often it can be difficult to sort of figure out well, what does this actually mean. So um, this is going to be more of an analogy based video on how this works. The long and the short of it is uh, if you're thinking about risk Vulnerability is how likely you are to be knocked down by a hazard. Capacity to cope is how well you can either take that knock or how easily you pick yourself up if there's been a problem. So, let's think of um, a population in a country as being like a person walking down an unsteady path carrying a weight on their back. And they're walking along this path with this weight on their back. The vulnerability would be how much weight they are carrying. So. Uh, you can think, you know, if you've got more weight on your back, you're more likely to topple over sideways um, if something knocks you. So we've got some things that uh, the person will be carrying anyway. Some uh, nuggets of vulnerability. And they are called stresses. Now stresses are things that work on you long term, when you've got something that's pressing down on you or something that's weakening you long term. Um, so this could be thinking about countries in uh, tectonically hazardous areas, you could be thinking about living close to a fault line, or it could be a long term poor economy, bad weather, which could um, loosen uh, the ground, so if there's an earthquake or a volcano, it could create landslides. These are the stresses. However, there are also shocks. So, say if you had um, a war in another country and a whole load of refugees suddenly turned up in your country, that's going to mean there's more population and it's going to, you're suddenly going to become more vulnerable. It happens very quickly, so unlike a stress, which is long term, this is a more of a short term thing. And the shocks you think of as being pieces of stress that are thrown into that basket. So already walking along with the weight of the stresses and suddenly ooh, shocks thrown into the basket as well. And the more of these nuggets of uh, vulnerability you've got, the more vulnerable you are. Now let's take the hazards. Let's imagine person is walking along and say uh, a dog comes running up and jumps at them. That would be a hazard. So here we are. Friendly dog, definitely not a mouse. Uh, Bit better. 
friendly dog comes running up, jumps at them. Now, because they've got the vulnerability, all this weight on their back, they're more likely to topple over backwards. The bigger the hazard, think like the bigger the dog. If it's a little tiny dog, it's not going to make as much difference. But if they're really, really loaded up, even a tiny dog could knock them over backwards. So the hazard is the dog that comes running up uh, and hits them. So it's a mixture of vulnerability and hazard that creates the likelihood of this uh, person falling flat on their face, i.e. a disaster happening. Now, even if they do get knocked down, they might be able to pick themselves back up again. Or they might be able to absorb the weight of the, the dog hurling itself at them. And we call this adaptive capacity. Now, adaptive capacity is the ability for a, uh, a population or a country to uh, adapt to a hazard as it's coming in, deal with it, and avoid it becoming a disaster. So they may not have the preparation, but they can just deal with it as it's happening. They can absorb it. So, um, I think for this fella, we could, uh, or whoever it is, uh, we could think of it in terms of having this person's got stronger muscles. There we go. Big strong muscles there. The big strong muscles mean can more easily sidestep, dodge out of the way, or lean in when the dog hits them, or if they get knocked over, they can pick themselves back up again relatively easily. Um, and that's adaptive capability. Being able to roll with it. So, second thing that you could do, uh, as well as having the adaptive capacity, you could have perception. Now, if you can see that there is a hazard coming, so for example, picking it up on the seismographs, uh, that there's an earthquake coming, tsunami detection equipment, or volcano prediction equipment, you can prepare yourself. You can be more ready to either withstand it or try to avoid it. So that's perception. And that means that uh, you know, if you've got your head up and you can see that the dog's coming, you can prepare yourself for it. As opposed to if you've got your head down, suddenly, doof, comes and hits you. Third thing is exposure. How exposed are you? So you could think about, have you got um, earthquake-proof buildings? Have you got uh, defences, uh, like... Um, Sort of volcano shelters, that kind of thing. If you do, it means you're less exposed to the hazard. You can think of this in terms of uh, our character here having some good strong shoes or something to grip the ground with, less exposed to the uncertainties of the path. exposure. So, if we're thinking about this, uh, we've got our vulnerability, that's the weight on the back of our character working their way down this unsteady path. You've got the hazard, which is the, uh, the dog is coming up and is going to try to knock him over. Um, so the vulnerability and the hazard work together to suggest whether there's going to be disaster or not, i.e. are they going to fall over. But these resiliences, perception, adaptive capability and exposure, they are going to either help our character maintain their balance, or if they do go over, it's going to make them easy, easier for them to pick themselves up with. If you want it quick and simple in one line, Vulnerability is your likelihood of getting knocked over. 
capacity to cope is how well you're going to bounce back or pick yourself up again if you did fall over. If you've got any questions about this, let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching.